us off with your number one takeaway from Saturday. Georgia defense is for real, for real. Literally won the game themselves. You know, scored more points on their own than Clemson did in that game. That was – I was saying it before. I'm like, man, you just look it up and down this roster, whether it's Adam Anderson coming up with the big sack, whether it's N'Kobe Dean having mul- – uh, the linebacker having multiple sacks. Their secondary didn't give up a lot of space. And the, I think the bigger even takeaway in that one is Clemson might be in trouble with that offensive line. 100%. Like that offensive line is not – like yes, they're overmatched against Georgia. Georgia, one of the best defense lines in the country. In my opinion, that was a match of the two best defensive lines in the country in that game. But you're going to have to – like that, that line's going to be a problem no matter who they're trying to block up, it seems like. I do think that Georgia's defensive line is a good test, and I think they would. That not only could they not pass block, they couldn't run block. You know, Clemson was refusing to run the football even against two high looks. Like they had six in the box, and it was like, absolutely not. We have to throw. We have to throw. And DJ Wangalele even against those boxes could not get any time. He, he was even. You know, they were also blanketing them in coverage. I think Clemson's receiving core outside of Justin Ross, you know, really wasn't all that impressive like I, I think that was another big struggle for them too number 10 yeah, though I, I, saw a, I saw a nice tweet a tweet i like from uh, eric crocker saying dj is just throwing the ball hoping his receivers end up getting there at the time because they just like they weren't they yeah. weren't getting open and he was just having to throw it praying that they would eventually separate i i, I want to rescind what i said not just i thought justin ross was heavily targeted but Joseph Nagata was probably the most impressive receiver for Clemson. Even he wasn't creating all that much separation as much as he was just catching through contact and being sure-handed as that big sure-handed receivers that he was. And I think this Clemson team took a step back in a lot of areas. Quarterback, obviously, they lost some receivers in Amari Rodgers and Cornell Powell. And yes, they aren't NFL names, but those are legit. They were legit good college football receivers. Now they're going to struggle, man. I, I do think this is going to be a bit of a struggle for Clemson. Mm-hmm. Uh, the offensive line is not good. The receiving core takes a step back. And he, as good as DJ Wangalele is, he's not Trevor Lawrence. I mean, it's going to take some time for him to hit the ground running, whereas Georgia's defense is what the doctor prescribed in terms of as good as they were. Jordan Davis, a monster. I love how they're using N'Kobe Dean. The linebacker was rushing the pass around 10-plus uh, snaps yesterday, had four total pressures, and was relentless, explosive. They have so much on that Georgia defense. I know in the beginning we were talking about you know, dark horse candidates to win the national championship. And a lot of people have been saying Georgia in the office. And I've been, I don't know. I don't know how much I believe in JT Daniels. This defense might be enough, you know, because you look at, you know, there were some up and down play from CJ Stroud, obviously some up and down play from DJ Wangalele. The only two teams I feel all that confident coming out of, um, you know, Saturday's games are Georgia and Alabama, both being absolute juggernauts. I was talking to, was I talking to yesterday? I was, I said, just, can we just give can we just like let Alabama have the national championship now they're like can play their own thing and then we just like everyone else fights it out for a second and we actually like get invested in that because I think everyone knows at this point after seeing what Alabama did that they didn't go anywhere lost eight top 40 picks they didn't go anywhere they're still Alabama I, some people were saying that, you know Alabama was 19 point favorites against Miami in that game and still Covered. went in and blew them out like it was Covered. not even close yeah I had the commentator saying May Diaz most of all, wanted to show that they belonged on that football field. And that wasn't even achieved, let alone covering the spread, obviously, let alone winning that football Trash game. Trash described it as Christmas come early with the 19 and a half points that he was betting Miami there. And no way. Uh, St. Nick took a wrong turn. Dude, took a shit. Is what he, did. he took a <laughs> shit on that bet, whatever it was. Number two, uh, actually, I'll do a takeaway of mine. Jaquan Brisker, safety of Penn State, monster. Yeah. That game, and everyone's going to look at the pick, and that pick was sweet. He was just sitting there robbery season on um, that, uh, that pick in the red zone to win that football game. But, man, watch his run defense. Watch how this guy is deployed in the box at, what, six foot two ten. He is relentless. I think he did have a missed tackle in that game, one or two, which I know we talk a lot about Brisker's tackling. Mm-hmm. But still, that energy, that effort that he plays with, along with actually having the tools to be a presence in the run game against Wisconsin – you know, obviously known for its you know offensive line and run blocking, was impressive. I think Brisker is going to be that you know guy I'm watching every single week. He is going to be that player that is so fun to watch. I know I hate to say it, but so fun to watch every single week because of how relentless and how he plays the game and how he's deployed. I mean, he had a fantastic pass breakup playing off coverage in the slot on a deep out, and with, and like a few plays later is playing you know six you know six uh, six feet away from the line of scrimmage and just hitting people in the backfield. So I'm, I'm I'm impressed with his versatility and how well he played in that game. Yeah, I mean that guy might even end up at linebacker with how good he is on the line of scrimmage in the NFL. Uh, my next takeaway: quarterback class. We still don't fucking know. We still don't know. 
I, I mean, I thought Carson Strong looked all right. I think the most impressive one of any guy who we said was kind of a top prospect was Malik Willis because I think the things we said need to change with him. And now, obviously, he's going up against Campbell, our Camels, our Camels. RIP. Put him in the dirt. But the things we had needed to change in terms of mechanics, I thought we saw a much more improved passer in that regard. Now, again, it's against Campbell. Any quarterback, like pretty much any of the top guys, Sam Howell would have gone out and lit up Campbell. But uh, for a guy that is as talented as he is physically, which the most physically talented quarterback in this draft class, to then get the technical aspects up to snuff and up to where the other guys are at in this class, that he's the one who rose up boards, whereas Howell was in quicksand all night Friday night. I mean, Spencer you know what Rattler's he looks like? First I- throw, like it was Spencer Rattler is the exact same guy. They came in saying he was going to be you know, more in command of the offense. And it's like still the same guy who's just like, oh, I can hit that throw. I can hit any throw out there. And it's just trying way too much for turnover where he plays in that game. I want to talk more about the quarterback performances. Sam Howell, you saw a lot of the same tendencies. And I know people made this comparison probably too much, but Baker Mayfield, when he's handling pressure, yeah. you know, you're reacting early, bailing out of some clean pockets. And I, I had this take, I was going to tweet it, but I feel like I can't word it correctly. C- you know, CJ Stroud and Bryce Young, have to be embarrassingly bad for them not to be playoff competitive. Yeah. Sam Howell has to be a fucking superhero. I mean, Stroud was... I know. Stroud wasn't good, but he has bad. to be worse. And he, and like, he goes for, what, 400 <laughs> yards still? Yeah. Like, Bryce Young, the two, two, uh, Bryce Young, the new quarterback there at Alabama, and then you obviously have C.J. Stroud, the new quarterback at Ohio State, they have to be embarrassingly bad for those teams to fail. Yeah. Sam Howell has to literally be Superman. You know, offensive line right. has not significantly improved. He lost his mm-hmm. two best receivers and his two best running backs. This team is going to struggle to support Sam Howell, and that's a very good Virginia Tech defense. Jermaine Waller looked really good in that game, had that insane pick against Sam Howell, struggled under pressure, took a lot of sacks. Um, I also thought Bo Nix didn't play all that well. I know the, the box score looks good, but still inaccurate, uncatchable throw. No, not uncatchable, but catchable and accurate throws here and there. Ball placement still wasn't all that impressive. Most player, impressive not, player in that game. What, 20 to 22? You're not ready to hop on with Jordan Palmer say he's the number one pick? No, I see. I, I went back. I not wanted ready. to like him. I wanted to see improvement. But you still see, like, ball placement stuff where you're like, okay, that was completed, but you'd like it in a different spot. Um, and they also going it, against it was the still Akron better Sears. than completely missing guys all together who are open, no, which 100%. was way too I guess you got to get you got to so get to that point. Levels, yeah, yeah, yeah levels. Um, they were going against the Akron Zips. Mm. I think it's going to – DJ Wungalele is going to have to really find – some. you know, those receivers have to improve. That offensive line has to improve. Um, Carson Strong did look really good, though, and he continues to – they were down 14 in that game. Hmm. Comes back, and he has some impressive, impressive arm talent, dude. He can put it wherever the fuck he wants. Yeah. Him and Romeo Dubs are going to be legit dudes there for Nevada. Uh, my next takeaway off the quarterbacks, and it was in that Auburn game, Tank Bigsby is a dude. He is going – he's that fake ID segment. He's going to be a guy, as we enter the 2023 NFL draft, a lot of people are going to be coveting as one of the top running backs in the class. My biggest takeaway was – and he broke tackles. He was fast. You know, he trucked dudes. The decisiveness. He hits the hole like a bat out of hell, and it's the right one every single time. And that makes it so much more difficult to slow him down when he's just making chunk yardage plays, let alone when he hits the home run like he did early in that game. He is a different breed of back, and I watched a lot of talented backs this weekend. Mm -hmm. B. John Robinson, um, Charbonnet for UCLA, a lot of other guys that are playing well. Tank Bigsby, in my opinion, was the best of them all. Yeah, there's a case to be made that the three best running backs in college football are all true sophomores right now. The nature of the position. Bigsby, B. John Robinson, Deuce Vaughn, uh, B. John for Texas, Deuce Vaughn for Kent State. Those could easily be – those could be the top three backs in the country. Um with, you know, Mohamed Ibrahim tearing his Achilles after his Brutal. super superhuman performance on Thursday night, sadly. What about uh, Clemson? I want to go back to that game. They were playing that true freshman running back receiver, Jordan Shipley. Did that guy belong on that football field? He did not look like the requisite size to be playing against Georgia. He, he was tough, but, like, man, that was uh, – he was a walk-on, I think, or something. I don't know what. I don't I know if that I was didn't. a charity drive. It was insane that he was uh, he was in there. He's a all like an all-star. I was kidding about charity drive, but he's an all-star high school player. But he looked. Uh, he definitely didn't look like Georgia's dudes. I'll say yeah, that. Georgia was on a different level. Um, back to football. My next takeaway: Nick Benito against UCLA or not UCLA. Tulane getting the colors mixed up. Um, he was working this inside move against Tulane left tackle 79 like it was his fucking job, and he had no answer. The guy had no answer. And there was a handful of times where he would then try the edge and try and speed up the field, and he got that too. He's looking slim, though. How, how much weight does Benito got? He's looking 
235. Listed 240, so we'll see. 235, 240. He's looking pretty slim. Um, I think that was an impressive play. And I also threw, because I was watching a handful of edge players, uh, Carl Loftus for Purdue. He was reckless, relentless, high effort, lunch pail, everything that Purdue describes. I still would like to see him string together more consistent early wins in the down. You know, I don't. I think you see a lot of hand fighting, hand fighting. He gets there, mm -hmm. but I do think he has the energy <laughs> and the the physical ability to get there. I think some refinement and some polish for Karloftis turns him into what maybe what Aiden Hutchinson can look like. Yeah, I I do think that he's going to be getting the high motor label. I think that's a fair. Uh, he is a high motor guy, though. Yeah, but I don't. I, it's not all that he is, but he is a high motor type. Mm -hmm. Whereas Aiden Hutchinson, another player we watched, was put, going against. A, a future insurance salesman at right tackle. They destroyed number 60 for Western Michigan, took the strip sack, earned a high grade from PFF, but my God, the level of competition was not there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my next takeaway is Alabama, the you talent this, top yeah. to bottom. Evan Neal looked like just throwing, like looked like a different level of competition, basically. Evan Neal was playing on. He looked like an NFL player dropped on a college football field and guys just didn't have an answer. Um Basically, every level of that defense still still got it. They still got it. They, they are they are the number one team in the country. And offensively, you know, I had this Russell take. solid. I didn't think he was exceptional, but, like, solid enough. Yeah. So, I mean, as good as you need to be to win with that yeah. fucking team. And this is the worst receiving core they've had probably three, four, five years, and it's still mm -hmm. top three, top five in college football, John Mechie, and then the transfer, Jameson Williams from Ohio mm -hmm. State. The like, those two guys fly. still have speed yeah. for days. Like, and, and, Again, and that doesn't even include Slate Bolden and the other guys that they have. Like, Alabama continues to reload literally at every position. And we've talked a lot about the transfer portal. I was thinking about this, how that can benefit, you know, teams that are not juggernauts in their respective conferences. Mm -hmm. Oh, you can go pick up some guys, and they don't have to wait a year of penalty. Alabama picking up a former four-star for Ohio State at receiver is fucked up. Like, they should not be allowed. <laughs> they should not be allowed to do that. That's well, just, and they just take Toote. To oh, God, I'm just butchering Toe to 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 Yeah, yeah. The linebacker from Tennessee. They just take Tennessee's best linebacker. It's like if you started for your other school and were like one of your best players, you shouldn't be able to just transfer. You know, like that That to me, I mean, obviously I don't actually care, but like that's just like it's too much. I mean, it, it, it continues. And I've had this take a lot, but it continues to show that the college football, how it's currently positioned, is not rigged, but it's positioned to make the rich richer. Like you, it is very yeah. difficult to be very good and then suck. Mm -hmm. because of how easy it is, how much the, the edge you get as a recruiter and the edge you get in the transfer portal being a juggernaut football team like Alabama, Ohio State, Clemson, Georgia, et cetera. Yeah. So they, the rich get richer with that those transfers. James Williams looks like a monster with a ton of speed. Which makes it incredible to me that Florida State fell off as hard as they did because they should have been. I mean, you think about early in the college football playoff, they were there the first two years. Or no, they won the championship before it started, and then they went to the very first one with Jameis. Like, they should have been the team – in the ACC that was there the next six, seven years, not Clemson. Should be yeah. Florida State. For them to fall off and not be that team was malpractice, honestly.